This is Shotgun Sprantlin with uscfootball.com from the Pac-12 baseball tournament. And mixing it up here a little bit with instant analysis from USC's first ever game in the Pac-12 baseball tournament. The Trojans took on UCLA, needing a win to probably solidify themselves in the NCAA tournament as an at-large team. I think they were kind of already in, but... They're adding to that resume. They get a big win, 6-4 to four over the Bruins. They were down in this game, 4-1 to one after John John Vons, the little brother of Tyler Vons, hits a three-run uh, double, clears the bases. After USC went to Blake Sodderson, interesting move. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but USC bounces back. Immediately answers an inning later with Austin O'Vern, the fabulous freshman. We've talked about him previously on different podcasts and whatnot. Comes through with a monster big three-run homer where he failed to get a bun down first couldn't get it down the speedster was kind of you know his momentum was carrying him a little bit too far forward he told me um and you know coach was you know came to him afterwards said nice home run but let's get that bunt down uh, so you know he was happy for that you know ties the game up there you know now comes back around again the next inning and again Austin O'Vern with a big clutch two-run triple once again. His nation-leading 14 triple on the season. He's already set the USC record. He's shooting for potentially the NCAA record. Still got a little bit of work to do there. He's got to get three more triples in the next couple weeks. That's going to be a difficult thing to do, but large ballpark here. He's already got two extra base hits. Got a chance to add to that when USC plays again on Thursday. They will take on Washington, potentially for the right to win the pool. USC has set themselves up to go forward in the in this Pac-12 tournament um, with a win or with a little bit of help uh, with some other, other teams. They could potentially be the wild card team if that happens. If they get a win, they're going to be 2-0 in their pool, and that will automatically advance you on. Also with the win, UCLA is pretty much ousted from the tournament, so USC has pretty much ended the Bruins' chances this season. Unfortunate scene early in the game, actually. A USC starts Eric Hammond, the freshman. He hits Eric Karros' uh, uh, son, Kyle Karros, uh, UCLA third baseman, hits him in the face, actually, with a pitch, hits him in the brim of the helmet. It kind of comes down. He had a laceration on his face. They had to take him to the hospital, get some CT scans, checked him out there. Hopefully he's going to be okay. We'll be back uh, tomorrow for the Bruins. And you hate to see an injury like that. But that's just kind of been the Bruins season. They've had injury after injury after injury. And so USC took advantage. You know, they, they've got play, UCLA's got players out of the lineup. They don't have as many pitchers. But – because of some of the injuries they had, they actually had the, their normal Friday starter, their front end, uh, front line starter, Jake Brooks, pitching in this game against USC. And USC was able to get six runs off of him total. Now, he kind of carved up USC through the first, uh, looking at the box score here, through the first four innings, four and a third. And then Austin O'Vern gets the big hit uh, with the, the home run to right field. He later, he gets the triple an inning later. So that really sets back uh, Brooks' uh, stat line there. He'd already he exited that game, so he wasn't the one facing O'Vern for that second time. But you know, he, he gets to he gets to wear those and pushes his ERA up, up above five, five six now. USC, on the other hand, interesting way to go about it. You know, they could use they basically have the same exact setup as far as their schedule as what they were supposed to have last week. A Tuesday midweek game, and playing today against UCLA. A Thursday, Friday, Saturday potential series if USC were to make it all the way to the Pac-12 Tournament Championship. Instead of sticking with their normal rotation, using their Tuesday starter today, and then using their relievers as they normally would, USC starts Eric Hammond, who has been their midweek starter, but then they go to Blake Sodderstedt. Very interesting decision there from Andy Stankiewicz, and that tells me that USC thought that if they can win one more game, then they're going to get into the NCAA tournament. So they're going to go for it right now. They're not going to wait until Thursday, playing against a Washington team uh, with a, with more depth than UCLA has right now. They're going to go for it. So they go to Sodderstedt on three days rest, have been their Friday starter, but he had a pitch last Friday instead of you know it being Thursday. Yeah, one less day of rest of the series last weekend were moved up, uh, but he had to put USC's got pushed back because of rain in Tucson. He pitches two and a third, was not super effective. He gave up the the three run double to uh, John John Vons. He was struggled with his command early, had a couple walks, and then John John got the big hit against him. Settled down a little bit after that. He goes two and a third innings for USC. And then they turn it over to those back-end guys that have been fantastic for him. Caden Connolly, the lefty, goes an inning and two-thirds. 
one hit, two strikeouts. He was fantastic. Kyle Wish comes in, does pretty much the same thing. One and two thirds, one hit, one walk, one strikeout. USC locks up a six to four victory that pushes the Trojans that much closer to advancing the Pac-12 baseball tournament. But more importantly, all but assures that they should be in the NCAA tournament when it's announced on Monday. USC looks like they are going to make a regional, make the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2015. Uh, it should be really, it's been really fun to cover this team, but it should be really fun to see them going forward. Uh, you know, we'll see what they can continue to do in this tournament. Once again, they're getting contributions throughout the lineup. The middle of their lineup didn't do much today. The bottom of the order, once again, comes up big. Uh, Nick Lopez, three for three with a walk. He was on base every single time. He scored three runs for USC. Ryan Jackson right behind him. One, he was one and one throughout, uh, one for one throughout the the day until his final at bat. Uh, he had a base hit. He had a walk. He was on base, scored two runs. He did a little bit of everything for them. So the bottom of the lineup scores five of their six runs with O'Vern driving in five of those. Bryce Martin Grozelanik had the other one, the former UCLA player. So I'm sure that was a little sweet for him. But the Trojans. Wrap up a victory, six to four. They will play again on Thursday at the same time slot at 2:30 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, we'll try to have some more coverage from that, but we'll see if the, what the Trojans, uh, you know, they'll be, they'll know it then whether they, if they win, and they're automatically, we know they'll be automatically in to the Final Four of the Pac-12 tournament. And if they lose, we'll know more then about where they actually stand as far as potentially getting the wild card, which goes to the team, the one and one team that has the highest seed. So if the top three teams were to, in the were to win each of their pools, the top three seeds. And USC was a one and one team. They would be the fourth team to be selected. But we'll see where that kind of how that kind of all plays out, and you know how that goes as the tournament continues. Different setup this year. It's in Scottsdale Stadium once again. But this year, instead of there being four games a day, and it being a double two double elimination tournaments of four teams, and then meeting at the end for one championship game, potential of six games in five days. This year, they went to pool play to less uh, to lessen the stress on the teams and the pitchers' arms. You've got uh, you've got two games in the first three days. You're guaranteed two games, and then, like we said, uh, the three winners of the pods. Uh, there's three teams in each pod. Three winners advance, as well as a wild card team, which is the highest seed. All tiebreakers in this are all revert to seeding. So seeding is really important this week. You want your best teams. You know what they've done during the regular season to matter, and it is going to definitely this weekend. We'll see how the Trojans continue to progress. With that, I'm Shotgun Spradling. Got to get back. We're about to get first pitch of the last game of the day between Cal and Oregon. See what happens here. Looking forward to another really fun matchup in some in beautiful weather here in Scottsdale. After I've been traveling a bunch on the East Coast with a lot of rain, but excited to cover USC baseball, get out to see them here in Scottsdale, and looking forward to seeing what they can do the rest of the week. For Shotgun Spratling, make sure you check out uscfootball.com for all the latest news um, and analysis from basketball, football, recruiting, and also a little baseball now and then.